Hello, hello, and welcome to another wonderful episode of Submitted for Your Approval, the weekly show where we talk about submissions for the collective card game, both ones that made it in the, into the uh, game last week, and more importantly, ones that might make it in next week. I am joined, as always, by my faithful co-host, Grief. Aldi folks. And today we have a special guest, the uh, creator of the Archetype Completionist, which is a very active force in the design community, and uh, the Realm Admin for Woolly Land. Uh, our, our guest is uh, Squawk Awaker. Hi. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to start with a couple cards that just made it in uh, this week. Let's start with the Storyteller. The Storyteller is a four-drop Spirit Nightling from Sweatlow. Uh, uh, three, six, with at the start of the turn, each player chooses two of their units and permanently swaps their text boxes. So this is made by the uh, Sweatlow gang, in this case, Plopka, Aiden, and Wham. I really, really like the art on this one. And this is interesting because basically what this does is swap stats most of the time. But... If you're really, really clever with it, you could get it to do extra stuff by taking the, um, if something's got like a, this unit's target or whatever, you can rearrange it so that it no longer has one of those things and take advantage of some of the property uh, switching effects. Uh, what do you think about it, Grief? Um, it's twofold. 90% of the time, this card does nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's basically only used for certain builds where you want to uh, put different effects on different units. So like maybe put a um, undying brute effect on a, bi uh, on a big undead uh, creature uh, or a big undead unit so it will be reanimated. Um, sure, it also attacks. Would be fun with stuff like um, mom or the or the not a shlorp, how's it called? Um, soul claimer to just reanimate them, while as well putting the uh, putting the effect of, uh, of from them to the online brood. The thing is, you have to basically sequence the, those effects to make the most use out of them. The only thing that's luckily holding it back is that you cannot stack effects. Yeah. So in most cases, it's a four cost three uh, four cost three six, which is decent, and occasionally does disruptive stuff or helps you combo into little gimmicks. With stuff like yeah, repelling amulet. If you repel uh, repelling amulet your unit or your opponent's unit onto one of your units, and then switch the text boxes, that unit's just banished, and so you can do some really cool combos. Uh, what do you think, Squat? Uh, so. If, if I have understood this correctly, it only switches text boxes and not stats. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically someday a combo deck will pick this up, rule the meta, and we'll nerf it. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of cool potential combos with it, I think. That art is wild, though. I have no idea what's going on. Well, no, I have some idea what's going on. I like that dress. <sighs> Plopka always just knocks it out of the park with this. Yeah, I want to plug Puapka's webcomic. It has. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. For those of you who don't know, uh, yeah, Puapka's got a webcomic. Uh, we'll link to it in the description. Slowpoke, it's good. Read it. I'm a fan of it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't read it yet. Uh, I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard good things. I've heard good things from a lot of people in the community really like it. Um, now, this is very interesting. We have a Parachar uh, plug from Grief. So this is the one Grief wanted to talk about in the accepted submissions. Down is a one-drop mind action from Karachar with choose to gain a uh, unit to gain flying. At the end of the turn, it loses flying and takes two damage. Um, this is neat. Uh, so this is kind of like a fling effect from MTG. Uh, for those of you who don't know, fling is an effect that lets you just deal all the damage of a unit to the to the face, but here you can uh, you won't might not lose the unit if it's big enough, or you can just use this as a, as a kill spell for a two drop. So it's a lot more flexible than just your standard like fling type thing. Um, and it's got a really cool flavor because Car Char is the cartoon realm, and this is the wily coyote runs off the ramp and then falls into the abyss. Uh, 
Well, let's start with you, Squawk. What do you think of it? Mm, well, uh, when I first played Collective, I remember playing a deck called Mind Self Ping with like Electric Magi. Mm. So, uh, 100 weeks too late, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, uh, a lot of the mind self ping tools are kind of gone now. I think uh, Thunderhead is still in, right? It's still good. Yeah, it could be. I think so. So if you're looking with mind self ping, you still get options like Thunderhead if you want to do that. Maybe the archetype completionist we're going to talk about a little bit. Later. They can maybe revive it. Um, I mostly think that the way I'm going to use this card is to give it flying for a turn and then just deal big damage to face with whatever my biggest beater is. But there are a lot of other ways. Using this on Gamburu is really, really fun because <laughs> if you can get both off of the same turn, Gamburu can now gain flying for a turn and it'll also trigger his uh, effect to give him overrun on the way back down. Uh, what do you think, Grief? Um, it's quirky when you want to use it for more damage profiling to just give the unit evasion. But for the most part, it's actually pretty efficient removal for anything that comes into play just now. Um, it kills basically everything that's on uh, er, nearly every single one drop in our game. And our most important, uh, our most important um, HP thresholds are 1 HP and 3 HP. So it most, of all, it most of all could set up pingers or work side by side with pingers, or just as, a, as you already mentioned, kills most units that are in the one to two cost range, occasionally even at three cost. Uh, do we have any like other normal cards that just give flying, just like that? Yeah, no I, limitation. Um, I think there is basically only merchant. Yeah, merchant. Night shift merchant, and I think there's one more card. I don't even think we have equipment that does it, yeah. Goblin, because but that's Ether, rotated. Ether Wings rotated out, so we don't have that card anymore. Hmm, yeah. I think it's the only... There's a hot air balloon, but that's also rotated. <laughs> yeah. Huh. So yeah, we. I'm glad we have an effect like this in the game, and I'm glad it's got such a really cool... It's very, very specific to card jar. And now... Time to talk about the way I broke the game this week. Um, <laughs> Captain Dan Smith. This is going to be a lot of reading, so give me a minute. Is an 8-drop neutral 2-3 human astronaut from Carthian, a legendary, with some each member of the Star Force squadron you don't already control. Friendly astronauts get plus one, plus one, and in tomb, if you control another astronaut, return to play. I'm just going to summarize these other three units. We have one of each color. We have Lieutenant Eric, the Strength, Jack, the Spirit, Amelie, the Mind uh, units. They're the Lieutenant, the Security Officer, and the Navigator. Uh, Lieutenant Eric gives them plus one HP and regenerate. Jack gives them plus one attack and duelist. And Amelie says whenever a friendly astronaut kills a unit, scour to then gain one X EXP. You'll realize that the designers on this card are me and Grief, the, <laughs> the two hosts show but this is actually squawks pick for the week so if you were just i've actually seen a lot of people misread this card and not realize that by the time this hits you have like 30 points of stats on the board uh empty folder talked about it in his review and said that this is going to become is a five star on his star rating system which usually means the card's broken and it is going to be a dominant force in the meta um personally i mean i designed this card i love it but Darter did a great job on the work on the artwork, uh, you take out Eric, and I'm pretty convinced that most of the time you're not going to have much to worry about. In order to deal, if in order for one of these to do their procs, you might be able to get one or two procs off before. Most of the time, you're going to get hit with some sort of damage spell. Other people disagree with me and say this is super sticky, and this is going to become basically the best eight drop in the game. What do you think, Grief? Um, the thing is, it's probably going to be one of the best eight drops in the game. Um, even though if you, um, even though we have to consider that, yeah, sure, they, your astronauts will use regenerate if you get rid of Eric. Um, that's still four HP you have to jump through. Mm -hmm. So it does. So it doesn't get killed by most of our three damage spells. Has to get dueled, and most of the um, it will probably do a uh, do a quite uh, preferably with most of our other targets. 
So in most of case, you have to get a hard removal for it. And even if you manage to chew through one or two of them, there's still the option of dropping another dam. Yeah. So yeah. And then again, it's neutral, so it fits into nearly every guy. So it fits into ne nearly every uh, hero slash archetype. Every affinity, yeah, duh, but not every deck would probably use him. Um, most could. The thing is, sure, it's pretty uh, pretty decent um, high end for mid range or pretty good control piece. You could also put him into Egolus and whatnot. So yeah, I think Dart will probably love to play around with it as well. Yeah, Egolessness really wanted a tool like this. What do you think, Squawk? Uh, what makes this card unique is that like for other eight drops, you can just drop a removal on it and it's gone. But here, uh, if, if if you try to remove Dan Smith, he will just come back, and mm. the other the other astronauts. There are three of them, so it's very sticky. And if you do not have a board clear, it's it, it's gonna be a problem. Mm. Uh, one of the drawbacks of this is you have four slots available. Um, one of the neat combos that was suggested uh, by Mystic, Mystic actually, uh, Mystic and Cannibals actually did help with this. I didn't get collaborator slots, but they did help with some of these effects. Is the Underlabs Enigma combo. So if you have two copies of Dan Smith, they will constantly bring each other back, um, <laughs> which is cool shenanigans. And then if, uh, I know there was a submission this week from me, uh, Mass of Many, you can glom together all three of your astronaut crew and have one very, very big, very, very scary duelist. That's more susceptible to removal, but a lot funner to play. Uh, so yeah, let's get into the meat, uh, the meat and potatoes of the week. My favorite part, the upcoming submissions, starting with Rafa the Destroyer. Um, so a bit about the archetype completionists. The archetype completionists are this little group that uh, basically tries to fill in the missing stuff in the archetypes we have here in Collective and give them the tools that they need. Uh, Squawk, you're the one who came up with it, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah. Well, I've, I, I came up with the archetype completionists, but not with the cards yet. That was actually well. No, well, yeah, yeah, but you came up with the idea of doing this really th this thing, and I think it's really cool, and it does some really great stuff for the... Uh, for the, the meta as a whole and just for the community. Um, you want to talk a little bit about what this jam is we got on? Yeah, um, this time we had a special round. So n normally we choose a tribe or an archetype and then we create a bunch of cards for that one archetype. But um, this time we had a special round you know, that we titled Hybrid Archetype. So each card uh, helps two or more archetypes and uh, it means there's a lot more diversity this week. Yeah, and so I'm a big fan of versatility. So I absolutely love this idea. And I thought that was a really cool uh, pitch um, to get these. And I think that's a way to fill in a lot of the archetypes faster, obviously, is to do ones that benefit two or more archetypes. So Rafa the Destruidor is a 10-drop Spirit 8-8 giant spider from Teatus with ambush, deadly leap, and exemplar. With summon, all friendly units everywhere have their attack set equal to their HP and lose can't attack. And when this blocks, choose up to two non-Rafa spiders from your deck and play them for free. Wow, this is cool. I got a chance to play with this a little bit in Sentinels. I didn't win that round. I'm not very good at Sentinels. He's really, really big and really, really potentially uh, bad. You don't want to leave him out because he's got Exemplar. He's ate it. And I think the problem with this uh, that's a little interesting, though, is he is a 10-drop who wants to block. And I don't think that's going to be relevant in a lot of matchups. It, it, it's just interesting how it's kind of pulling him in a little bit, a, a couple different directions. Uh, what do you think, Grief? Um, that so-called drawback is basically negligible, considering that's a deadly exemplar leaper with ambush and maybe... The problem with, uh, with spiders was always they don't have a win con. Basically, they rely completely on their hero, and they, <laughs> it's a, it's a unique little it's a unique little joke in the community that, well, 
spiders are only valuable considering how good uh, when, uh, whenever Bullock's level five is broken. Um, that has always been the history with them. But then again, you're not you're completely ignoring the last part of that card because it's basically the most irrelevant. Because spiders aren't that good, even on legacy. Um, it's basically just another card for control that that you just slot, uh, slot in as a two to three off. And this card makes me sad for all the wrong reasons. Because it's better wake the world. You've basically power crept wake the world, and there's never a, really a reason to play that card anymore. Well, but a lot of people are saying there wasn't a reason to play Wake the World before this, so... No, Wake the World was basically a can't attack or place card. This card basically made Wake the World completely shit. <laughs> we had that exact discussion. It would be okay to nerf Wake the World. And we thought, hmm, Wake the World is trash. I think it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, now let's make now let's make a card as no, let's make make the world at least. Well, so so if you're talking <laughs> about another card game for 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 a second, if you talk about like Magic, you have like Legacy and Vintage, which are the most broken format. They're only broken because of a couple cards. If you look at a lot of the older cards, the vast majority, like ninety eight percent of them, are garbage. They get power the world isn't standard. What? <laughs> Wake the world isn't standard. Wake the world's still in stand. Oh, it is. It is. See, nobody even knew that. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> I don't know. Well, the thing is, over time, yeah, you get cards, their <laughs> cards, and I mean, you can still run Wake the World as your fourth copy of of the Rafa effect, I guess. Um, uh, I think yeah, the, the thing is, it's it's completely relevant that it's that it called spiders. Sure, you could win off that, but. Rafa win, wins, uh, wins basically on its own just to hyper boost you into a level five, and um, that's it. And it's it's a pretty beefy beat stake that's just used probably for control dart and occasionally for KM shenanigans. Yeah, so um, mostly that leap ex exemplar is going to be, or the exemplar part and, and rushing out your, your ults is going to be, you think, the, the main use case for this kind of thing? Yeah. And then this is just kind of decoration. So for spiders, like you said, spiders have been historically a little weak. Um, this gives them something kind of neat. For places, I still think places kind of need a little bit more push along. Um, we have flips. Um, we have a couple different places. I, I'd like to see places get some more support. So I think I think this deserved an upvote from me. Uh, you convinced me. I don't know if you're trying to convince me, but you did convince me. So this is actually a Grease pick, and it's my card, so yay. Um, <laughs> this is the Robo Fairy. It is a three-drop strength 2-2 two -two robot fairy from Perotis with flying, and whenever you play an action, Herald 1 plus half that action's cost rounded down. Um, first of all, Shadow Knight actually did a pretty good job on art. It's a cute little flying little butterfly ro uh, robot, which is what I wanted. And... What I was thinking with this is we needed, I wanted more for the action spam uh, archetype. Uh, so you'll see the archetypes I picked for this is the action spam in both affinities, fairies and robots equipment. So it does the Herald thing, but it, it's mostly for playing a bunch of cheap actions and seeing how far you can go with it. Um, what do you think, Squawk? Mm -hmm. Well, uh... I do like that strength fairies are getting a buff, and I also like that robots are maybe getting a buff, so it's all good for me, this card. And I think it's cool because this is both a flyer, um, which we always need more flyers, and it's a flyer that uh, you have to you know, buff down the road because it's in the kind of thing that has a lot of buffs. Um, I'm a big fan of evasion, and I don't think we have quite enough. Uh, what do you think about this card? Um, it basically will only fit into two real, uh, really into two decks because red is not good at action spamming. <laughs> yeah. At all. Uh, well, we have we have flame tongue, so we're trying to build. The thing, that. the thing is, flame tongue exists, but it's still not really playable. The yeah. thing is to get to the point what two decks would probably use it is either equipment. 
which have the density of different actions that they want to play to buff their cards on board and you and maybe get a off chance to buff your other um, to hero for two or maybe three in some circumstances the other card and the other archetype is fine enough flames because those actions that they're playing are costly enough to actually make it valuable the thing is you're not hitting flames but only flame creators or other robo fairies or other cards you want to play in tandem with flames because flames are only created as tokens yeah so if you look at look at the math behind this i think the equipment package uh is something you're that you got to kind of look at here because with master of arms you don't lose card advantage off of playing a bunch of cheap equipment and they have other tools that help reduce the cost of your equipment. So in the late game, having one of these already out can really be helpful because uh, the way the math behind this effect works is it actually benefits you more to play a whole bunch of cheap things than one really, really expensive thing. As far as the heralding goes. Yep. So that's why it kind of plays in a little bit more to the spammy side of equipment. And I think we, we, we really should maybe push to see if Brightling Sorceress and Flame Tongue could become like a real fleshed out archetype. And this was supposed to be a step in that direction. Very, very the, good step in that direction. The thing is, flames sure are basically, or spam decks are sure a um, good archetype. But you have to consider that most of our, uh, most of our AOEs are one damage pings and stuff like gun, uh, dead and gun exists. So tokens are pretty much dead against that card. Mm. Do you think that this card has a chance to see play in the mind deck? So mm. mine's known for action spam. Not for full manner, funny enough, only in KM. Yeah. Now be because, K because KM has the potential to switch from uh, for, to, sw uh, to utilize this in an early game and switch into a blue form and from there go ham. In that case, sure, you could actually utilize it as that. Okay, and this was the, the final one we wanted to talk about for the jam. This is actually Squawk Waker's, uh, both Squawk Waker's pick for the week and Squawk Waker's submission. The Shape of Strength is a two-drop strength, zero-zero shapeshifter. With summon, choose a tribe from the desired tribes of cards in your hand and gain that tribe's abilities. If there are no desired tribes, only gain plus three, plus three instead. What are desired tribes? So basically, you get one of one, two, three, four, five, six effects. Uh, if you have a dragon in your hand, you can pick to gain plus two, plus two in flying. If you have a frog, you can get plus two, plus three in duelist. Lizabo, plus three, plus two in frenzy one. Robot, plus three, plus two in herald one. Sheep, plus two, plus two in ward. And wolf, plus two, plus two. And duel a unit on summon. Neat. Um, so this is really cool. We got a shapeshifter. I'm a big fan of shapeshifters as a tribe. Basically, anything we're doing with them, I'm going to love. Um... So Squawk Waker worked on this card, so I'm going to give Grief a chance to talk first um, about kind of what he thinks of the card. How would you use this? What to or what decks do you think this is most uh, useful for? Good question. I'm still contemplating where would I actually want to use that card, or where it's in a tribal deck where it's not actually worse than a tribal pick itself. Sure, you could use it in a uh, wolf deck, but it's not a wolf, therefore it won't um, trigger amalgamation. It's not a robot, so it doesn't gain. It gains the tribe on summon. It gains the tribe on summon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but in and every other okay, but in every other place, it's not really that useful. Okay, so yeah, and for wolf, it would be pro probably decent enough. Lizabo. Sure, but mostly just in a legacy deck, maybe in standard two. Frogs I don't care about because they're pretty useless on their own. Dragons aren't really an archetype, sure say, so yeah. Um, it's a neat little uh, red tribal connection card, but I honestly don't care about it. I actually just read that. You do gain the, the tribe, right, Squawk? 
Yeah, you do gain the tribe. Okay, you gain the tribe. Um, so what are your thoughts on this? I'll, I'll kind of close out this one. Yeah, um, uh, this card basically, uh, it's the manifestation of the card yam, the archetype completionist. Complete all the archetypes in one card. <laughs> Um, for, uh, for for the frogs, I want to say it it it's, it has the same stat as the old card um, Celeste Missionary, because I think like they, they could really benefit from a strong baseline card. Um, Dragons was mostly just flavor. Uh, they, they they all have flying. Lisabo because there are there are already some frenzy Lisabo cards. Um, robots because they also need more support. Uh, sheep, uh, it's it's like a, it's actually a bit weaker than the this knight. Uh, it also has that also is a two two with ward. I can't remember its name right now. And then wolf to 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 proc amalgamation basically. And I wanted to get all of these effects into one card, and I think it would be cool because you kind of like switch switch between them if you're paying multiple. Multiple yeah. tribes in your deck in your deck. Yeah, I think I think grief is maybe a little bit too hard. You're just running maybe more uh, more of a generic Helldeem that can manage to squeeze in just one dragon. This gives you an extra evasive evasive unit that's almost or very very close to the curve. Um, I think the duelist is neat. It's a slow removal spell. Um, uh. And then, of course, yeah, you get more sheep in because actually, I think we have enough variety and diversity in our sheep that the sheep is there more for like a completionist type uh, sake. Um, but it's kind of a lot of interesting modes and a lot of different flexibility. And I love cards that can be played multiple ways. I'm always going to advocate for those kind of designs. I'm going to upvote it here on the show. Um, it's still in the single digit, so we'll see how it does. I hope it. I hope it does a little bit better. Now time for another uh, horrible shameless plug because, um, you know, this show is pretty awful. I never got a chance to ask you, uh, Squawk, do you actually watch the show? I do. I, I have watched, I think, four out of four, almost every episode. Oh, that is awesome. Never guess, don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Go first. <laughs> no, I think Wham watched us. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the real life medication. It is a uh, five drop spirit medicine from Carthian, and the designer is somebody else, not me. And the artist is us, and the art is lovely. Permanently give a unit in tomb, return this to play, and permanently give it neg one, neg one. If it has one or less HP, banish it instead. So there was a card, I think it's rotated now, uh, Galarax or something? Galarax? Yes. Galarax beyond ceasing. And basically, you can make anything into a Galarax the Unceasing now. So, what do I want to do? What do I want to put it on? What is? How am I going to get the biggest of this effect? Soul Claimer is a decent idea because Soul Claimer is going to come back a lot. Yeah, Soul Claimer is probably the best target because uh, when you do it with it, it also dies, so you, you can gain a lot of stuff from the Entomb. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of value. Yeah. Um, I mean, having a more survival Grovenel is kind of neat. Um, maybe not. Uh, Veiled Mother's already super annoying. This makes Veiled Mother more annoying. Um, hmm. Grief, what's your, what's your game plan? Well, we've discussed this basically yesterday, and we all came to the conclusion that it's just a safety valve for big units and nothing else. You yeah. won't really use it for something else because of the Banish, uh, Banish itself clause, so you can't really loop stuff. Um, there is no real reason to put it on smaller units because they lose value quite fast. So it's just basically a maybe one-off include to make your kites more survivable, your late game stuff. Um, basically, our uh, who, who would use it, probably just control that, so. Um, well, there, there are a couple corner cases. Uh, one I just thought of on the, on the lower end is there's, I think it's Vengeful Wraith. There is actually a unit that doubles its 
it's, it gains rebound too. Yes. And if you do this on top of that, you can double its stats multiple times. And then it won't Which lose. it does already. Well, yeah, but now it won't lose to the egg one egg one. It's just gonna keep coming it's, back. No, it still gets the it still gets the neg one neck one too. But it's gonna double its stats, so it's a net gain every time, so it'll keep coming back indefinitely. The thing is what triggers first, if the effect triggers first or if it just returns to hand, because it gains rebound on the entomb. I'm talking about on the second play. So you play it the sec down the second time and then relife it. Yeah, which card are we talking about here? Ventral Revenant, which is Entomb, it doubles its stats and gets rebound. Ventral Revenant. Yeah. Are you sure that's how it is? Ventral Wraith. No Wraith, yeah, okay. But that's Entomb a permanently card. double this unit's attack and HP. Oh, that one, okay. Yeah, this thing. If you get if you get this down on this thing, it, uh, after the rebound is done, you will never go down. You will keep coming back up every single time. So there that's, are some combos out there with this. Now, of course, that's it, quirky, it, but really not worth it. Quirky, but really not worth it. Yeah, I don't know. I love Jank, so I'm just gonna promote. Oh. Um, <laughs> but let's talk about standard, where this card actually matters. Okay. 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 <laughs> So yeah, yeah, we, we basically keep your big stuff around longer. Um, maybe yeah. Jank when Legacy becomes a thing. We'll see. Um, now, I actually promised I'd talk about this card uh, on, on the Discord, and I'm going to follow up on that promise because this is beautiful. Uh, more crazy nonsense stuff from Sweet Outlaw. Mistress of Ceremonies is a three-drop mine, two-three nightling from Sweet Outlaw with summon, celebrate a player. Woo! What does that mean? Active, choose a card in the celebrated player's hand. If it's a unit, swap its stats and give it flying. If it's an action, discard it to draw a new one. So, this gives me an infinite stock of retro version to deal with my opponent's 0x units. <laughs> Grovenel Forest, basically. Yeah, get rid of their Grovenel. Um, potentially, if I have a bunch of units, I or don't matter, that are like could be better evasive. I can now make them evasive. Uh, what else can I do with this grief? Uh, eh. But okay. Um, again, I, a card where we talked about it yesterday, and I even mentioned it to Popko when she was in the voice chat as well. Um, this card, for, for the most part, you will just choose yourself. Yeah, choose yourself. It, you will rarely choose your opponent because for the quirky little corner cases where your sniper was a dune worker that really cares about one attack units or a place that you now instantly killed in their hand as a death card, so wow, you don't really want to choose the actions except you really want to counter specific action heavy or uh, co combo decks that rely on two, three uh, key actions you're not, never choosing your opponent's hand. You're, you're uh, usually just using it for yourself to either filter your hand when it comes to actions, like reusing them with um, Amnesia Mage, or as I said, just to loot more cards, and just to give certain units you have in hand evasion. Usually, you don't really even care about the sw uh, swapping of stats, just to, uh, take a 3-3 three, three or 4-4 four, four or whatever and just yeah. give it basically flying. Um, the celebrated player, choose a player part is com for 80 to 90 percent of the time completely irrelevant. Aren't there a lot of, well I guess, so the reason you mostly want to do yourself, I, I think I agree with you on that, is if you're against a, 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 say an action heavy deck like a control, control brick type thing, then if you're getting rid of their board wipes and their other stuff, they're just going to draw a new one back. You're not really going to meaningfully remove uh, their options, but you can meaningfully cycle your own options because you know your deck better. Um, this I could be a tech card against like untargetable pride once in a, in a blue moon when yeah, get the rid of their weaponized align. type thing. <laughs> um, um, like that card better better kill you, and you better get a two for one off mistress to make it worth it to celebrate your opponent. And weaponize you see coming, so you'll you most of the time you want to have this ready to use on yourself 
but you do have that option, I guess, in the other uh, kind of corner cases. Uh, the best thing about it is basically hand information. Yeah, and hand information is neat. So that might be another motivation to do it, uh, especially with the new the other card we're going to be talking about later. Uh, Squawk, what do you think of this? Well, I think you're underestimating its ability to just be to disruption, hand disruption for your opponent. Mess up, mess up the cards, mess up their actions. Like any any control deck is going to hate to, to see this drop on them because they they're going to have to remove it unless unless Mistress removes. Their, their removals and then they can't remove it and then it's just going to snowball from there and they're not going not gonna to be able to control the board and they're just going to lose. The thing is, it's not really disruption because they just refill the hand. It's not re uh, you may pick a card or an action from the hand. Sure, it will. Uh, you can uh, pick the card that is completely annoying to you or the most disruptive to the game plan, but it's still they draw a card. So I think it's they draw an the action. Board, they draw a new one. I think that says draw an action. Yeah, so it's even worse. <laughs> yeah. So the, in, in some cases, you're just drawing them into the second copy of the same, uh, into the same, of the same card. And for the most part, even against Control Dart or Control Victory, the targets to disrupt the stats aren't that great. I mean, a Nefeth does not care if you're uh, switching its attack. It, it has the same Mom or Soul Claimer or um probably Rafa if it gets into the game does not care. It's yeah, they're just flying with upside. Yeah. Because uh, units are still in hand. Okay. Now, so we were talking earlier about uh Rafa, and I think this is kind of the comparison to draw here. Um I let's talk about Kalehound. Kalehound's kind of a newer player, or I'm not very familiar with their stuff. They've been submitting Couple really really cool designs, and actually, I think independently of my decision, uh, one of you, I think it was Squawk, uh, picked another Kalehound card. Uh, could be wrong on that though. Uh, Hydrangea is a four-drop Spirit One Four Hydra plant. Uh, in Terra, strangely missing. <laughs> Plants you control have Regenerate and Rage. Whenever the turn ends, gain attack equal to the damage taken. So this is a change, I think, from the original where it also gains some... Uh, oh, no, no, no. So it, it gains Regenerate, and it restores attack with that Regenerate. Um, this, overall, makes a package where you're making your opponent more hesitant to attack, which for plants, which want to forward up, I think this is a really cool option. And it gives them all Regenerate. Why aren't people voting for this card? I love this card. Because it's not broken. It's broken? <laughs> It's Be not because broken? It's, no, because, no, because it's nearly broken with certain plant setups. Hmm. Think okay. Torn Regent. <laughs> think, stuff, uh, think stuff like Beat Monitor. Mm -hmm. Beat Monitor <laughs> has a clause that keeps it from regenerating back. It actually loses that HP, I think. Hmm. So maybe this needs to be, do you, do you think this could be balanced at, say, six? I'm not touching that card. <laughs> You're not touching this card. Okay, um, so I, I, to play I, I, with I, I, it. I have a plane spill uh, I do in single player a lot. My stuff um, then gets removed quite a bit, obviously. That's going to be a thing. Every card's pretty much susceptible to removal. Um, I think a big problem with it might be that Spirit has no self-ping. Uh, or the self-ping it does have, which is Rumbly Earthquake, kills it. <laughs> but I want. Have you for, have you forgotten that burn to uh, that bur uh, forest to cinders exist? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe that's another reason people are hesitant. Squawk, what do you think of this? <laughs> uh, well, um, giving re giving regenerate to to everything, especially plants. Uh, I understand why people might think that. That it could be like dangerous or meta breaking, um, but I think like the design, other than that, is really interesting and creative. I like it. Yeah, the flavor and the and stuff is really fun. Um, this might just need a rebalance, honestly. Um, the effect is so, neat. and I do think this needs to get in the game eventually. Um, I had already upvoted it uh, to three. It, it's not in the great standing. Uh, I guess it's only, it's got a 71 percentile, so it's not doing 
awful, but it's not even great in that department. So that's even my pick. Oh. Still, you still not uh, considering that most plants have life on. Yeah. And pumpkin bale, uh, pun, uh, pumpkin kin exists. Pumpkin kin's gonna die before he regenerates, so he's only got two HP. Yeah, but pumpkin kin does not care if it sells attack for everything else that has life on. That's just a two attack normally. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Okay, so let's talk Rosa the Warlock. Rosa the Warlock is a six drop spirit 5-5 five, five nightling from Sweatlo. With summon, choose an undead in your graveyard and permanently add its abilities to a unit in play. And this is doing great. This is probably gonna make it in, so basically we need to prepare for this card. Um, so I wanna make everything in a brute, is that the idea? That's one. Of, that's a baseline, but that's not everything. You can that's the it. floor. What's the ceiling, grief? What is the ceiling? Um, the thing is, this, the ceiling has no limit. Everything that's now, if this card gets in, everything that's a, that is a passive ability or active ability uh, on that card could just be bonkers with it, or could be bonkers with it. Even even in Legacy, we have stuff like Ghostly Galleon. Put stuff like the Ghostly Galleon effect on Brood. Ghostly Galleon says, okay, every time a unit uh, you control dies, uh, it crews the Galleon. So if the Galleon dies, uh, it brings back everything that was crewed by it. So put it on a Brood. But that's one thing. You could also put the effect of um, Soul Claimer on other cards, or Mom, or even the effect from uh, even the effect from Revenant, and that you don't really care if the card even was put into, uh, into the battlefield. Put the Belfry effect on your Soul Claimer. Soul Claimer effect on Mom, I love that so much. That is fun. Um, um, <laughs> the thing is, you can even set it up quite easily. Mom puts stuff from the deck into the graveyard. Mm. I don't know if Terra discards card from your hands. You can put some other self, uh, self, uh, self, uh, bleh, self discard cards or self mill cards into your deck. And if we're also talking about legacy, people forget that um, Forgotten King exists, mm -hmm. which is the Forgotten Commander, but start of turn. Yeah. Oh yeah. This card is amazing, and I love it because it added everything that we that was quirky about Storyteller. This thing dials uh, dials that to eleven because now with it and Storyteller, you could probably put stuff from your graveyard. Uh, can now stack effects, which I said Storyteller couldn't do. Now you could stack effects and switch the effects with Storyteller to other units you want them to. Yeah, and there's notable synergies with uh, perhaps if I, I'm really fanciful, if we see stuff like Mass of the Many get in, um, then we can also make things undead and give a whole bunch of abilities to something. Um, exactly. So, yeah, if this gets in, this is going to be really cool. And this is actually probably going to change the balance of undead forever. Um, of course, it's, it is a summon ability. Uh, you're only going to get one proc off of it because as we established, it's very, very powerful. Uh, Squawk, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, it is the thing with the the, gra the the undead has to be in your graveyard, and not that many like self mill cards are for are, are in the game for spirit right now. Yeah. So, um, uh, I think that uh, the most likely target that you want to hit is Shinbone Yowster, because it uh, it has duelist and entomb return this to play without this entomb. So. It's like rebound, but in play. So I, I, even if we're just giving it to, to this card, to, to Rose of the Warlock, it's still going to be a six mana, five, five duelist and two return this to play. And like, that is really strong, I think. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice idea. And you, you got to remember, if you're building an undead deck, you're going to want to include this. And you're going to have a lot of options. So you want like eight combos. And that's a really, really neat combo, I think. Uh, using this as basically a double removal. Oh. Now, now I'm thinking, um, were Permos units only pirates or pirates on dead? Ooh, I have to look into that. That is scary because you could get like a the silence thing or the other doubloon thing. 
But Perlmaw doesn't want to do this because it's going to be an eight drop, or do they? Well, it's Perlmaw already plays stuff like um, what's it called? Earthquake and so on and so forth. So basically, you could use it as a one or two off to basically put your silence or your uh, your active, it gets plus two, plus two, and readies, and every time it deals damage, get the balloon dude. Hmm. So it would be pretty, uh, it's just, it just a thought experiment. Yeah. Some jank. <laughs> Okie dokie then. Let's talk, let's switch tribes for a minute and go over to uh, Vampires with Cortez, the Curse Queen. Another card that's doing pretty well. This week, I don't know if you guys have been following the votes, very high and low. There's kind of a lot of big gap between like the top five and like the bottom or the next five after that. Um, Cortez the Curse Queen is a four drop strength, two, three vampire from Deskmere with life bond, overrun, summon, create a slave to hunger. And whenever another friendly vampire deals damage, this gains that much attack and HP. In case you forgot what slave to hunger is, that is a two, one life bond, frenzy, two vampire. It's already a card. Um, this is neat. Um, Cortez is a character that's already been featured on a card before, so I think this is one of the uh, few instances we have where we actually see two different versions of a legendary creature. Uh, legendary, quote unquote, in terms like magic, like a unique named entity. Um, and it's got this beautiful art by Gentle Cat on it. Um, this is cool, and it curves very nicely into bigger Cortez. So this is supposed to represent like an earlier version uh, in Cortez's life. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, are vampires ready to build like a, a deck that can use this? Do we have that yet? Yes. Actually, she okay. makes that possible. <laughs> she makes it possible. This is this is what tips it, folks. Because the thing is, um, vampires are a tribe you don't really play as a vampire tribal because why would you do it? Vampire units are usually a pretty good starter units. You have Rain Reaver, you have um, Slave Funga, or are synergy based like the Vampiric Blood Priest and stuff like that. So yeah, in that case, it's quite uh, interesting because most of them have Life Funga, etc. Um, Cortis is better than her legendary self because she's far uh, she's far more aggressive. While while the other one is pretty slow in what she's uh, what she's doing. And I've looked at that card first, and I asked myself, okay, you're getting a four mana, uh, two three and a two, uh, two one. So hopefully the effect is qu uh, quite worth it. Why is it life wanted over one? Yeah, sure. Whenever, whenever a friendly uh, vampire deals damage, it gains the stats, which is pretty bonkers when you're considering Slave of Hunger is a frenzied unit. Yeah, so the frenzy get, on can, that. So even if it's blocked, it will at least give you two, um, two stat points. Um, if it deals damage even further, sure, it gets you four, uh, it gets you four stat points uh, for both attack and the uh, HP. But Tokens are generated after the card that creates it, so the Slave of Hunger that's created by the Cortez herself won't contribute to her before combat. And here is it where it's actually quite clever. Most of the other vampires, like Slave of Hunger, Vain Reaver, etc., curve into Cortez. And they interact in, uh, and they interact in a pretty specific way, like um, Vain Reaver, when you gain life before Vain Reaver attacks, its attack grows even bigger. Mm -hmm. So the same interaction will happen with Cortez. So if you attack with a Slave of Hunger, with a Vain Reaver, before Cortez can even attack herself, she is pretty much a huge, uh, he's a, she's a huge bait stick with life bond and overrun. What are your thoughts, Squawk? Well, I looked at this card and I thought, hmm. Even if it didn't have the, the uh, gain attack and HP ability, would it still be viable? And I thought, like, possibly. And with this ability, it's bonkers. Crazy yeah. card. So this so, actually becomes the leader of your vampire deck, basically. Yeah, she yeah. basically makes the vampire deck possible. This is the vampire payoff. Hmm. 
and app four too. So we'll see if this causes perhaps balance issues later down the line. That's always possibly an issue, but uh, I'm, I mean, if we if we think of that, um, Wayne River would have been the target of a nerf already because it's yeah. it's similar issue and it has innate flying. Yeah, and this does have to play on the ground, so it's kind of playing a little bit fairer. Um, so let's get to Grief's third pick. Uh, Sorry if I'm rambling. <laughs> no, you're good. Oh, you did pick the other Kalehound card. Uh, Travel Blogger is a three drop mine, one four human from nowhere in particular. Your units cost one less to play if they don't share a realm with another unit you control. Lack of a realm is not a realm. So this is fun and interesting. Uh, this art's been around on Archie for a while. And this is basically designed to help you build into Harmony, uh, which is if you control 10 units, each one's from a different um, realm, you win the game. Um, people are looking at maybe buffing it a little bit. Um, we'll see where that goes. So... This uh, is you could say that is a Harmony deck, but I'll I don't okay. need to. I don't need to say it. Kalehound did. So, what are your thoughts on this, Grease, since this, is your la this was uh, one of your picks? Um, okay, if you really must use Harmony, okay, put it as your one-off into your deck and play it at the start of the game and see if it ever pays out, but it probably won't. Um, this allows for two different kind of decks, and maybe Harmony. Um, <laughs> does anybody remember Rare Material? Mm -hmm. the, kite we nerfed to, uh, the kite we nerfed to stone, um, this combos with it. This could basically fit into a KM deck. This may, may actually make a, uh, make a rare material uh, fate combo list that is completely unit-based possible. Because, think about it, Realm Zoo, or like the zoo archetype and Magic Watch, which was basically a, uh, a random uh, uh, assortment of different um, tri uh, trial types that were basically just good units, put it into uh, put it into a rare material deck, a random assor a random assortment of um, different realm units with, which are good, which have a low cost, put them into a rare material deck, uh, play uh, Whims of Fate, reshuffle your hand, bring them back to uh, draw your entire hand back. Now, due to the rare material, their entire cost is reduced by two, and due to uh, thank, uh, cannot be lower than one. But thanks to travel blower, they can hit the zero mark. Yeah. So you could actually play this in a KM deck again. So I, I think that this is kind of interesting. So cost reduction usually ends up in mine for some reason. I don't think this really should be a mine, especially if you're going to run it with harmony. Um, and I don't know if this stat line's worth it to play it for four unless you're KM or a mind deck. I don't see you playing this in like promo or uh, anything in, in spirit. What do you think, Grief? Mm, yeah, it's, I mean, sure, you'll probably won't since what archetypes do we have or realms do we have? You have um, Aesthetica, you have. Uh, Mirage, you have Valnacht, you have um, Oceanographs, you have. Is the fish, is there another fish realm? I don't know. Oh, Adif. just Oceanograph. Um, Adif. So you could basically play around with that, um, especially when it comes to stuff like uh, Ron uh, Ronin esque combos yeah. to reduce specific, uh, to re reduce the specific cost of different cards. I don't know if the cat, um, cats are. A, Mini realm on their own, and if they're it's a realmless. tagline, they're realmless because there was an mm. idea to make the tagline for them, so that would have also contributed to that. Yeah. So yeah. What do you think, Squawk? Mm, well, uh, a realm zoo. I, it does sound very enticing, I have to say, but um, I don't. I don't think this could like compare to. The, the, the crazy aggressiveness that like some bullock decks can put out I, I, even if this like would discard your whole hand i, I don't know uh, or dis discount your whole hand i don't know if it, if it would if it would be worth it so then there's only harmony 
and harmony isn't very good yet, so um, we we'll probably not do very much. Yeah, I, I think it might be a step in the right direction for harmony, but the lack of a realm itself, realm to put it in, so I don't blame him. And then the stat line maybe needs some tweaks, but I think this is an interesting effect. Um, and it's definitely going somewhere. If it doesn't do too well, then maybe we could see a resub um, and see if we could find some something that makes this more incentivizes the payoff it's going for. Um, but it really needs maybe it maybe it calls two, and no. Yeah. And now it appears that Squawk wanted to be really really nice and plug my card for me. <laughs> the start of Squawk's picks. Fresmane the Sparrow. So Fresmane the Sparrow is the six drop mind three four shapeshifter from Carthian. With summon, choose a type from among friendly units in play. This gains that type and friendly units sharing a type with this gain flying. So this is obviously, so we, we both like shapeshifters a lot, I think, Squawk. Is, is that reasonable to say? Yeah, I, I think it is. Yeah, because Squawk did a morphine biologist. I wanted to push for these in Carthian called the Gralix. They're shaped aliens. Believe it or not, one of them has already been featured on a card that did not get in. Um, this is, and it's actually the same character. So this is the bird in the corner of Institution Impatient. This is what she actually looks like. Um, Squawk, I'll let you start off on this one since it was your pick. Okay. Mm, yeah, uh, what makes this card unique is that it, it can be like a finisher for any kind of deck that one uh, uses uh, where, the cards, where the units have the same tribes and uh, that goes wide. So mm. it, can give, it can give everything flying, it can just go face really hard, but it costs six mana. Yeah. So uh, yeah, mm. it's kind of designed to, uh, basically flying evasion is really powerful in a game that doesn't have a lot of evasion hate and a lot of evasion to be with. Uh, or a lot of leap. And so that's kind of what I was thinking with this is I wanted this to be late game or mid game, maybe a payoff to get in one really, really big swing. What do you think about it, Grief? Um, I mean, it's basically a ro overrun-esque effect. You're usually using it as a game finisher. Mm. Build a board uh, of maybe dune walkers, dune walkers fish yeah. or whatever. Um, drop this, sure. Now you're dead. <laughs> I do like that it is in mind because then it doesn't have the same problem like with the morphine magistrate where it, where it was neutral and it like saw play saw play in almost every deck. And since it is just in mind, it's a bit more control. Yeah, well, because the reason behind that is spirit's not supposed to be able to get cheap evasion. And Bump it up if if spear if you try to do this with plants in particular. Um, the thing is, it's still insane. cheaper than morphine magistrate because it's still cheaper, it's, yeah. <laughs> because even in spirit, it's still a seven cost, and that's not really too much of a problem when it comes to well, your plants that are five, five, six, six that are new, usually grounded now flying over the heads of your opponent. So yeah, <laughs> this could bonkers. I think it's fun. Um, so do you guys do you guys think this is appropriately costed? Let's get some feedback just in case I need a resub. <laughs> Maybe it could be worth worth it to make it exclusive. Possibly. Yeah, that's <laughs> for it, I guess. But that does ruin the flexibility if you want to run this with say wolves or something. I don't know. Would it then would it ever see play at that point is the question <laughs> yeah and that that's the problem is if you if you we, if you weaken it up too much all of a sudden it stops seeing play um because blue actually uh mine doesn't have a lot of tribes that really or what what tribes am i floating with this in in mine specifically besides doom walker none yeah fish fish, fish have their own. The thing is, basically, okay, when we're looking at legacy fish and dune walkers or one attack matters, usually you have unblockable, so they rarely really care about flying. It's only basically a standard thing. Um, but still. Um, humans, maybe with a neon tray? Uh, 
yeah, the echo burn neon stuff, but doesn't it usually win the game on turn five or six anyway? Yeah, so this would be, to, yeah, good point. It would be, a, it would be an option. So yeah, sadly, it's, I think it's just, it's just, it doesn't really have a, a good home in mind. So it kind of really can't be exclusive. Um, but Arter Sauce did great on the art. Very, very interesting. We'll see where it goes. Maybe it could find a home. Let's talk. Let's go back over to the cartoon crazy stuff. Also, it doesn't need help. So we actually talked about this last week on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, this prediction, but now it has a body. So that is awesome. Lisa Ka, Toon Detective is a three drop spirit, three two Toon Fox from Karachar. Summon, blindly choose a card in your opponent's hand to discard. And the blind pick, again, it lets you know which card's on the far left, which card's on the far right. And you can do some deduction based around hand information you might gain from saying Inquisitive Visitor and adjust accordingly. But now, instead of it being a plus zero, like the original Lisica's prediction, this is now going to be a plus one because you get a body out of it. A uh, three, two body in particular. Um... Are you excited, Grief? You were excited about the original. Of course. And now it has a body, it's even better. Yeah. It can attack and block. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm happy it's yeah, I mean, it's, it's, st it's still the same skill testing card as before, so. Yeah, it's pretty much not a lot new, I think, to say. Um, I do like that they added more description. That's probably what contributed to the vote bomb, not uh, the body as well but the uh, additional stuff there. Uh, so this is really clever. For those of you who design cards, look carefully about how they made this super innovative effect and made it understandable, right? Uh, and take note. <laughs> uh, Squawk, what do you think? Uh, I think that in this game, uh, there, there isn't enough uh, payoff for knowing about cards in your opponent's hand. Mm -hmm. And this, this creates that payoff. And I really like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I think that that's really potentially interesting, and I'm very, very glad to see that it's doing so well. So let's talk about Azdrez and Skiff. I'm gonna go to a as of yet undeveloped realm. The animated broom is a three drop neutral object from Skiff, a three one with duelist and entrance ready. This a little thing to talk about me Azdrez. Uh, the designer of this card, and Zinker have been trying really, really hard to get that text onto a card. Entrance, ready this. I don't know if it belongs on a neutral card. I think that belongs on Spirit, because Spirit's the only one that could get, like, Ambush and Agile. I know, Grief, you don't care so much about Affinity Identity. You probably should mind. Um, so Skiff, I didn't want to talk specifically about the realm here. So Skiff, from what I can tell, and I've been reading around on the Discord, they have this gem, this crystal stuff that makes stuff float, and they're going to do, like, Sky Pirates. My problem with their execution on this is the two cards they've chosen to show us are Animated Broom and the Sky Skiff, which neither of which were particularly exciting. You're highlighting objects and vehicles instead of, like, interesting, like, players in the realm, right? Like, I, I haven't been able to see kind of the interplay of the actual things going on because I'm too busy looking in the corner at your broom that is able to sweep the, its own floor. Um, but flavor considerations aside, I think it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, I don't know if it's balanced. Um, what do you think? Squawk. Squawk gets to go first this time. Grief's been greedy. <laughs> well, I think this card because uh, I like this card because it is very, very innovative, and we have never seen this effect before. Uh, and you can, I mean, it has a lot of a lot of ways you can use it in. You you can uh, you can bring it back. You can uh, you can use cards that create copies in play. You can like hit a zero three and then blink it if that's what you want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just. It, it, it can do so many things, and we've never seen it before. So I thought I thought it might be worth highlighting it. Well, I think people don't, don't want to get it in, and I don't really understand that. Like entrance ready, this is bound the right card. There's nothing implicitly wrong about it, but a lot of people are really hesitant. I think about that line of text in particular, 
Uh, Grief, what do you think? I personally don't have anything against um, slow pack pouncer or mm -hmm. uh, stalk pack broomer. So it's basically the wolf that we already have as a three cost three three that when it comes to play, it dual stuff. It, mm -hmm. In this case, it's just delayed. Um, and in almost all cases, unlike the pouncer, this thing kills itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going to die. Uh, and that's a big, that's a big sad. Um, <laughs> Ego may actually, uh, Ego may actually uh, enjoy another form of removal on a stick. Mm -hmm. And a stick because it's a broom. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> of course, a lot of the time you might. We have a lot of uh, one HP hosers, so this might not even get to see the light of day. You can get exactly. without losing any tempo. And so that's why I said where I just think we're kind of highlighting the wrong parts of what could be maybe a fun air punk realm. What do you call the airship kind of aesthetic? Um, I don't know. It's probably, again, some stuff like magic punk or in this case, uh, I don't know if it's really even punk because we don't really know any kind of me um, mechanics or stuff like that. Yeah, um, I recommend uh, to Asdras here on the show, come up with a lore pitch like we did for Karchar and for Carthian so we can get a better sense of what this realm is about. Um, and I personally wouldn't focus so much on the objects and tell us a little bit more about the setting and the characters um, because I don't get a really good feel out of the two submissions that we've already had. Um, we have a little bit of time, so I did want to dip into one of the uh, three extra picks that Grief had there at the bottom. Uh, okay. Squawk, do you uh, see any of these you want to do? Maybe Bloodsmith. Bloodsmith? Okay, so let's do one more from the jam since, you know, Squawk is, is the card jam person. Let, let, we can do this real quick. So this is Bloodsmith from the Hybrid Archetype Jam. It is for Dwarf, self sack, and Ping. Bloodsmith is a one-drop strength, one-two Dwarf Cultist from Vanarad. Creepy. It has active, deal two damage to a friendly character to draw a card. If you damage yourself, lose one max mana and draw another card. Cool. Grief, you are like the resident uh, self-damage expert. So tell me, do you want to run this in your self-damage stuff? This card is great. <laughs> this card is great. Okay, we got to um, sign off from the Lord of Self Damage. Um, you're basically never really caring about your self damage part in this case. You're only using the self damage um, aspect and certain. Uh, if you're probably pretty late in the game where you're seeing this card, so you don't really care too much about your max mana. But it's a good aspect for dwarves in this case because it mm. refuels your hand and basically draws you into more gas because it's. A, our dwarves are a pretty fast, low curve, um, in your face archetype that needs its pieces and quite fast. Um, on the other hand, it's good for both self pingers, um, just as we uh, just as, uh, as we had uh, <clears throat> on the don't look down. On the other hand, um, it also is quite good to enable self side cards that like um, glow sacrifice stone, glowstones and other cards that you want to destroy or at least want to eat some sort of damage. So it's a good package. And you see, and if you take a look at the um, creator of the card, you may actually know why it's a pretty well-rounded card in its own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this went through a lot of iterations on the AC thing. I actually did get a chance to kind of see some earlier versions of it, and this is definitely a cleaner execution. I think it's funny that he's a dwarven. He's got an axe, but he's still a dwarven miner. He's still going to be mining up glowstone. <laughs> That's probably, I think, one of the better. Well, I don't think that dude in the background really agrees with your statement. Yeah, uh, I should <laughs> avoid disagreeing with the, the dude in the background. Uh, Squawk, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I like it because it, it does it does a lot of things and it does it very cleanly. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe you're running a glowstone, uh, a glowstone deck, and it's going to be really strong there. Or you're running self damage deck, and it's going to be really strong there too. Or you're running a dwarf deck, and it's going to do dwarf things and uh, help you win. Mm. So, uh, like an another card that uh, um, embodies the archetype completionist uh, spirit, hi the hybrid card jam spirit. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the hybrid aspect of this and filling in a bunch of different archetypes is really, really good. I do like, I don't like dwarves. I don't like losing max mana. I think that it's just squicks me out, even if it's good. Um, I like that this is opt in, that if I want to play this card, I don't have to use it that way. And I think that is one of the things that helps me uh, vote for this design. You guys have convinced me. I'm really seeing like the versatility in this card, and I'm always a big fan of versatility. Um, it, for some reason, it never wants to register my clicks. Okay, I think that's about all the time we have. So we're, let's go to closing remarks. Um, so thank you very much uh, for joining us today on the show, Squawk. Thank you. Um, it was great having you. And we got, so got to see some really cool stuff in our type completionists, and I'm sure we will again in two weeks. We'll be jam. Uh, thanks, as always, to my co-host, Grief. Welcome. I'm happy to be here every week. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, just to be nice, we will throw a link in the description to uh, Poapka's webcomic, so go check that out. Um, I haven't really said this before on the show, but uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, it helps me know that I'm actually uh, justifying my uh, putting in all this time each week. We love doing it for you guys, talking about all the cool submissions and highlighting all these awesome uh, designs. Um, so we'll see you guys next week. Bye.